Hello, welcome to the Everything Review. Today we're going to be reviewing the alphabet. Now, you might have seen the title and thought, F through G? What? That doesn't make any sense. Are you only reviewing two letters? And to that I say, you bumbling cretin, this is obviously the second part of a series. If you would watch the first part first, which is why it's called the first part, because you're supposed to watch it first, you would not be confused. Don't watch it, though. Don't watch it first. I want you to be confused. I want you to suffer. I, w I hope you die. Actually, no. I hope you live. I hope you live to be centuries old, and you watch everything you know and love rot away into dust, while you despair within your withering body. Anyway, let's begin. Now, the first letter in the alphabet, if you were to remove all the letters before F, is F. F is a very consistent letter, always pronounced F, except in a few special exceptions, like the word of. There is the issue that sometimes the sound F is spelled as PH, but I don't think that counts as a lack of consistency on the part of the letter F, since the letter itself isn't being pronounced differently. It has a very unique shape. The capital is the same as the lowercase, except it's not slouching anymore. It's weirdly similar to E in the uppercase, which is odd since they aren't anything alike, but it's not a big issue. With lowercase f, there's something weird for digital interfaces where when it combines with the letters i, l, or another f, they have to combine together in a ligature, otherwise it looks bad and weird. I think this is a detriment to the letter, ideally you shouldn't have to make it a special case when one letter combines with another, so that is points off. In terms of cultural impact, well, it denotes an arbitrary function. In music, it stands for forte, and the note in between F-flat and F-sharp. People who use the internet often use the letter F to metaphorically pay respects for someone's loss or a tragic event. Or at least I've heard they do. I don't use the internet. It represents Fahrenheit, a common scale for temperature. Also, it means f So I'll give it a D plus. 5.2222222 out of 10. The letter L is a classic. Usually it is pronounced ul, but in some words like talk or palm, it's pronounced now, the question of writability is important with the letter L, because it's, ju it's just a line. It is hard to get any more writable than that, but the capital I is also a line, and sometimes they're both a line at the same time. It's confusing. It's just the worst. Capital L is fine, I guess, but liking the letter L is the same as taking one. A 3.888 out of 10, and for a letter grade, it gets an L which means lose. The next letter in the alphabet after L is M, and boy, what a letter. It's just like the letter L, except it's written differently and it makes a different sound. Unlike N, M is probably the most consistent letter there is. It's really only ever pronounced M. The only issue I have with M is its width. It's one of the widest letters in the alphabet, and that's real annoying. It causes the same problems as W. It's very irritating. This is the only major problem with the letter M, but it's extra disappointing considering M is also the name of a guy from the James Bond franchise, and he wasn't too wide at all. If anything, he was skinny, so the letter really has no excuse. I'm giving it a 7.8 out of 10. It also gets a C for a letter grade, but it's a reluctant C. A C+. Plus. A C++, maybe a JavaScript. Now, the letter N, I have mixed feelings about. It's nowhere near as consistent as M. It changes to a different sound and a few unique words from other languages, like piñata and jalapeno. And it also changes to a different sound in a regular way before G and K and C and Q and X and P and B and F and V and Y and R. Altogether, it's average on that front. The shape lines up with M in the lowercase, but in the uppercase, it's something completely unique. In terms of cultural impact, there are a lot of words that begin with N that I like to use a lot. For example, negative, nice, gnome, energy. Lots of words like that that just have a nice, friendly vibe to them, you know? 
Altogether, I think it's a C for a specific number, probably a 7 point my credit card number out of 10. Anyway, the most common consonant letter in the English language is the letter S, but much like the letter E, this is only possible because it represents several separate sounds. It's pronounced like a Z, probably more often than it's actually pronounced like an S, and there's plenty of examples of it being pronounced other ways as well. However, in terms of shape, I appreciate the way the letter S looks. The way it's rotationally symmetric looks neat and unique and makes the letter work well as a symbol, like that one S that all children on the planet know how to draw for some reason that nobody knows the source of. Plus, the most similar sound to S is represented by a letter which is basically just S backwards. For a letter grade, it gets an S. S tier. S plus. Triple et. No, just kidding. It's a C. 7 point slope intercept out of 10. The letter after S is X, which is pronounced the way X is pronounced. It has like 40 different pronunciations, all of which could easily be represented by a different letter. The most common ones are X and Z, but we've also got G in example, and sh in she, and however you're supposed to pronounce it in the words WAMZN, LATINX, and Mwch. Despite having no actual uses, the letter X I think is pretty commonly agreed to be the coolest letter. You know, X-Men, SpaceX, Mega Man X, the X Factor, the X Files, Xbox One X, Series X. It seems like the letter's name is in as many words as the actual letter is. Plus, it's a neat cross shape. It's literally a shorthand for Jesus Christ. Knowing that, there's no way I could give it a bad rating. So, since the letter X represents 10 in Roman numerals, I'm giving it a 6.5, A minus. The letter G is unique for being a bit of a trickster. Despite being called G, it usually makes the sound G, but it not infrequently is pronounced J anyway. Probably the most commonly argued over example of this is the word Yeah. With other examples like genre, draft, night, etc., G is almost as bad as a vowel letter in terms of consistency. Its appearance is pretty gross too, it's a very complex letter relatively speaking, which makes it kind of hard to write quickly and very difficult to depict in small fonts. Although from a logical perspective, I appreciate that in both the uppercase and lowercase versions of the letter G, it looks like a C and a J combined together, resembling both of its main pronunciations. Except sometimes when the lowercase is written in this other form. Uh, now, most of the time when reading, your eyes just scan this as a G and move on, but if you actually take a moment to look at it for a second, it looks terrible. It has too much stuff going on, it doesn't even look fancy or stylized or anything, it just looks like it has a goiter. Altogether very disappointing, I'm giving it a D and pi out of 10. So G is the last letter in the alphabet for this part. The next installment in this series will be the final one. I just wanted to split it into three parts to uh, maximize the most amount of uh, minority insults. And so last video had a misogynist gag. This one had a racist gag. So who knows what minority I'll insult in the next one, in the final one. Uh, place your bets now.